come to you today as someone who carries within him the true aspirations of Xeon. Hey everyone, welcome to the Xeon Remnants channel. And today, we're doing another custom review. And this is, once again, for my custom sequel trilogy diorama that I'm working on. This is a First Order Jump Trooper. Now, the first time we've really seen a First Order Jump Trooper is in Battlefront 2. And I thought, what a cool variation of a First Order Trooper to include in this diorama. So we're going to go over how I made it and take a look at this guy here. So this First Order Stormtrooper is a 112th Bandai model kit, which is one of my favorite 6-inch scale versions of these Stormtroopers. The next one being Figure Arts. I got a bunch of these and I've been building them. And I thought this would be a really a good Stormtrooper to modify because obviously I can take them apart and I can do all kinds of things with it. So I decided to use a model kit Stormtrooper for this custom. Now, if you see here on the back, he does have a custom jetpack. Now, in Battlefront 2, the jetpack is very minimalistic. It's just an oval with two thrusters. I don't really care for that too much. It would have been easy to make, but not visually appealing. So I decided to go ahead, and I had an old knockoff Boba Fett, and I cut off the missile at the top, and this is a it's either a polycap or some kind of thruster from a Gundam. I repainted it white, black, and silver, just like all the First Order weaponry. And then I also found these flame effects. This is from Master Grade High New Gundam. The um, uh, fin funnel things have these effects, and they had a little baggie of them. And they fit perfectly on the thrusters, just a little bit of super glue needed for that. The base here is actually a Figma base, and the slot in the back of the model kit actually fits perfectly onto this Figma base as to give him the illusion that he's flying in the air. The bazooka that he has is a Zaku bazooka, I believe, a very old 1100 Master Grade bazooka. It's repainted white, black, and silver, again, to match the First Order aesthetic. The other thing I did have to do to modify this to make it fit in his hand was I did have to shave the handle down quite considerably so it would fit in the clasp hands of the model kits. Also went in and added some decals from some model kits that I had. Um, caution symbols, uh, some pinstriping type deal, and just some arrows at the end. Now inside here, as you can see, um, this is some sticky putty, or whatever you want to call it. Um, that's because I actually made a rocket flying out of this thing, and I used sticky putty to keep it in. We'll look at that here in a second. The other modification that I made on this Stormtrooper is the visor. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this on camera, but his visor is actually like a gold type color. What I did was I painted the top clear yellow and underneath a, a silver. And in the light, his visor shines a little gold. It's very hard to see on camera. You can kind of see it there. Um, and I did this because in the old Battlefront 2, the Clone Trooper Jump Troopers had gold visors. And I thought it would be cool to differenti differentiate this one with having a gold visor. And that was really it. Um, he has his gun here on the side. I did not paint this gun. Uh, this was this was in that lot of model kit stormtroopers I got uh, in a video previously. I really enjoyed making this custom. It came out really well. And I do have one more accessory for it. His rocket being launched out. Now this was made with a small piece of a... Um, I don't know what these things are called. These are little... Uh, plastic piping that you get at hobby stores and then I went ahead and hot glued some cotton on here to make it look like smoke and then I made a rocket and this was made out of Gundam parts as well this is a barrel from a Master Grade Wing Gundam and this is a thruster from I think an old tall geese or something I don't know um, but it fit perfectly well into each other I glued it together and painted it gunmetal and this also does come off um, if I ever wanted to go ahead and change the missile or something or something happens to this it's not permanently stuck there um, which is always good I just drilled a bigger hole in this rocket here um, this way you can just pop it on and off and then we go ahead and we stick this in the sticky tack inside the barrel and now you have a rocket being shot out of the first order jump trooper and I think that came out really cool now, I do need to tighten the joints a little bit on the model because when I put this effect in, it has a tendency to be brought down like this. Um, that's something that I'm going to fix by making the elbow and wrist joints a little bit thicker 
with super glue. You can also use varnish or paint for this. Um, super glue, really, in my opinion, is just the easiest way. It dries the fastest. I had to do the same thing on his head. His head was extremely loose for whatever reason. But I think this looks really good. And So in the diorama, what this is going to be is this flame trooper will be uh, shooting a rocket toward a bunch of resistance fighters. And here I actually do have a bunch of different resistance fighters and we'll actually be going over how I made these in another video. And here is the flame trooper next to the first order jump trooper. Both customs came out really well. I did some experimenting and tried some different things to make these customs happen. And overall, I'm really proud of them, and I think they're going to go great in this diorama. Um, the effects that were made really add um, something extra to these models. And my flame trooper doesn't want to stand. There we go. It really adds something extra to these models, and I'm really glad that I tried out some new things and I made these. I think they both look awesome. Next thing is going to be a first order sniper. That one's going to be way less complicated than the jump trooper. Even the jump trooper was relatively easy. Um, but I will be doing a sniper at some point as well. To face off against my resistance sniper, which is really just a Kmart exclusive Jin Urso with Cassian sniper rifle. I might be painting her up a little bit more, but she looks exactly like the sniper from Battlefront 2, so I don't know. We'll see. But, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching as we take another step forward into this huge diorama that I'm building uh, with a large Black Series TIE Fighter and all kind of battles going on in it. Let me know, what do you think of this custom in the comments below? Share your own as well. I would love to see other Star Wars customs. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more creative content. And look out for my top 10 bad things and top 10 good things about Star Wars The Last Jedi. Those were a lot of fun to make, and they'll be coming out shortly. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. And as always, Zigzion! I have the Rebels in my sights. Fire! Your aim still sucks.